during our last lesson, when I did think about RFC. So pretty much what we were saying was, in order to be aromatic, you need to be planar, you need to have continuous conjugation, and you need to obey the four n plus two rule, where n is a whole number. And I have told you, not everything that you see is going to be planar. So in order for something to be planar, okay, it needs to have complete conjugation. So they are all SP2. Remember, SP2 hybridization, everything is going to be planar, okay? Because SP2 is a planar structure. Remember from further hybridization, SP2 always flat. And therefore, that should normally result in a planar structure. And most of these compounds would then be aromatic or non-aromatic. Now, so something like this, then Anneli is going to behave exactly like benzene. Now, if you want to try and react it, this will be a bit easier. Okay? But it's still exactly like benzene. Okay? So at the end of the day, they are going to be very, very stable. We have the 18 annually, a little bit of revision from last week, in fact, 16. You don't need to draw these. Never in your life will you need to draw these. Just know that all of these on the board are aromatic, okay? Apart from these two. These two, you can get them to be aromatic if you remove a proton. But if you remove a proton, you add an extra electron in the ring, and both will have 12 electrons. So if you were to have an electron there, or an electron here, it's a tiny we had in the second one. If you put electrons on that carbon, there will be, there will be rearrangements, okay, and it will form this kind of structure, okay? That would be aromatic. In fact, that would rearrange to form benzene. It would extract a proton, a proton move, a proton shift, okay? And it will form benzene. But the other one, the one three cyclopentadiene, the anion, that would be very, very stable. Now, you have charge annulines. Again, we mentioned them last week. I just mentioned them a little bit here. Remember that charge annulines would have the same structure. The one where we have not really spoken about is this one over here, where you have a positive ion. A positive ion is a free orbital. If you have a free orbital, you will not, you will not have any electrons to share. Therefore, it is not involved in hybridization. Meaning there will be only one S orbital, two P orbitals hybridized as we do. Again, the structure would be planar. So in fact, cycloheptatrienide is more stable as the cation than it is as the neutral molecule. It will want to lose that problem. It will want to become the cation. Okay, so this is something that you need to keep in mind. These structures are found in nature. These structures are naturally occurring. Huckel's rule in polycycles, same thing will apply. Okay, now, these structures 
seem to be the same, but they're not. The way they're fused, they will actually have a different number of electrons, okay? The way they are fused, they will have a different number of electrons. Anthracene and phenanthrene, you can't overlap. You can't rotate them to overlap them. They are three benzene rings fused together, but they can have different properties. On the other hand, naphthalene, there's only one. Tetracene, you can again, I think you have to see there are four different ways how you can connect them. Okay? And the two on the bottom, they are isomers of tetracene. But you have the brick number of electrons. So I don't know if they show what they're called exactly. You know, every time just count the electrons, therefore they are therefore they are always parallel. Had the one of them had 16 electrons, then it would have been non-aromatic. Okay? Remember, I'm all the time doing using the 4n plus 2. So 4n plus 2 equals 14, n equals 3. 3 is the whole number. For the second one, 4n plus 2 equals 18, n equals 4. Again, do not learn these structures. There's no need. Just learn what you're doing. At the end of the day, even for exams, what's the third bottom line for you guys? Pass the exam. It's always fast. Okay, they will look okay? They have zero. I think you're going to do it again. Well, don't just pass. Listen, the topic is a good chance of doing well. Especially if the exams are from home. Because in this topic, in this topic, it's very, very important, okay, to ensure that you understand. If you're understanding what I'm saying, you're fine. But it has to do the area of how you name. But if you want to share it, do it, okay? Just a lot of manjaris. But at the end of the day, ask. The more you ask, the more you learn. Okay? Okay, you're not used to doing that as an actor. I'm quite young. I see myself quite young. I'm afraid to you. <sighs> but ask, and I'll help you. Professor. Yeah. Professor. Come on. <laughs> By the way, it's very true. It's tough. I know that I should be a doctor to teach you care. I have two masters in chemistry. I don't have a PhD because they think that they need to do masters in this other. That's my point. I'm still chemistry. But um, organic chemistry is my area of expertise. But it's better. Please don't be just comfortable. Don't think you're the whole. I know what they're going I know. Exams have, have not been confirmed to be. Because I said there's like small pressure at home. You have to go. Go. <laughs> Listen, My you have... Speak, but you don't have time to do that. So you have to. No, you have time up front to know what's in the book. Uh -huh. So then, when well, you actually need to do the exam, you will have seconds on the book. And you see, okay, I need to draw benzene, something simple. You go on your second, let's say benzene, you open the book, and you have everything there. But you need to have prepared the front. So I don't see it as being unfair on you guys, on the others, to use the book. Because if you prepared, the exam is harder. So the exam is open up the essays. You're going to come here and do an exam to see. I will give you some more challenging questions. Because I know, listen, if you go on Google and you just copy and paste a question, something will come up. 
your wood, your, your, your single wood is selling the day two in most countries. So if you're gonna say, is this a romantic? It's gonna be there, okay? So I will, I will give you some challenging questions. But then again, it's how you use it. I will think about the exam later on. For now, forget the exam, okay? It doesn't exist. But I don't, it's not over, it's not mine yet. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you as if the exam is gonna be here. Then there will be some minor variations. Now, here you have something that you should be very familiar from data. If anyone gets this wrong, there is a there is a way. Okay, now I'm not getting on this. Please make sure your basics are correct. I just I just spent the last two hours shouting at one of our students for having their base their basics as shit. Okay. You need to know your basics. So your basics are the mechanisms. Okay? The mechanisms, they're going to be something where you have to know. The mechanisms are something that should be your bread and butter. So this is an electrophilic aromatic substitution. Later on, we'll go in between nucleophilic aromatic substitution, something you have not done. Then that's fine. You can get confused there. Okay, but for this one, you should not have a problem. So it's electrophilic because an electrophile is electron loving. Therefore, electrophiles are always E plus. Okay, you can never have an alternative. Okay? It has to be E plus. Or it has to be an electron that should be And the ring will attack. <laughs> With Rodrigo attacking through another point. In reality, it is the cloud of electron that will attack the electrophile. Once that happens, you have removed the delocalization. The, lo the delocalization, once it's removed, now you have a higher energy structure. And therefore, you will want to go back down. And you can do that by adding electrons to the delocalization. Forget me asking you this question in your exam. Not going to happen. But this will ensure that when we go into a bit of more detail with regards to meet up our directing groups, which we have done in the past as well, but we'll be doing it a little bit more detail. What happens if we have two groups? What happens if we have three groups? Okay, then you are just in those. And this is your energy diagrams. Energy diagrams are very useful in organic chemistry because it shows you what is happening and what's going to be more safe. So there are two types of energy diagrams. You can either have E or G on the left hand side. In organic chemistry, we normally use energy. How much energy do we need for the reaction? Any reaction where you have an exothermic reaction. As soon as you start the reaction, the reaction will continue without stopping until everything is done. Now, there is a possibility that you might want to equal heat because of heat losses. Because so when the reaction continues, if you manage to it and let it cool, it will cool down to room temperature and the reaction will stop anyways because of heat losses. But once the reaction starts here, it will continue. And as you can see, the highest energy step is breaking the localization. In fact, to actually get and lose a uh, joint nucleophile, it requires very high energy because it's highly spontaneous. Now, the three de Graaff's reactions, okay, halogenation, you can have either I, O, fluorine, fluorine, bromine, or iodine. Iodine, for iodine, you're not going to be able 
to put it. Okay, it's a thermic, it requires very high temperatures, it was useful. Iodine itself, in fact, you will be very diverse. But bromine and chlorine both have their advantages and disadvantages. Why? Because chlorine will make a stronger carbon chlorine bond. Bromine it will be a bit, a bit weaker. So it depends on what you want to do next. So bromine will react with benzene. Bromine will react with benzene. But normally, this will be an activated benzene. For example, if you have phenol or phenylamine. So here we should think about benzene as the ring, okay? Not as the unsubstituted group. But normally, Bromine on its own, it's not an electrophilic enough for the reaction to take place. And what you would need to do is to activate it. And we do it by adding a Lewis acid, such as FeBr3. This Lewis acid is electron deficient, therefore it can produce the electron by fighting electrons from the bromine, from the PRD. Now, for this to be a catalyst, it needs to be FCPR3. Though FECL3 will also work for bromine. The only problem will be the products formed. Because if we use FECL3, we will not be producing FPCA is back. You can lose any of the four points. So keep this in mind. If you're using bromine, you use FEBR3. If you're using chlorine, you use FPCA3 as catalysts. If you're doing it in a lab, it does not matter. It will work anyway. Okay? But if you want to say it's a catalyst in an exam, Okay, or as a theory, use the one that is going to be the same and I am, as the hell you're going to be using. It just makes everything easier. Addition of the nitro group. Very important because we can get the taking TNT. Okay, I mean this reaction with the match is not this one is it explosive, it, it is explosive. Unless you can go into azodice and that's more configured. So if I want to add something to a benzene ring, I need an electrophile. Your electrophile here is a nucleus. Again, I know these are a vision for what is the name, but I know it's like from scratch. There is a mechanism of how you prepare your, your NO2 plus, where you have an acid based reaction with H2SO4 being an acid. And HNO3 acting like acting as a base, okay, forming H2 and NO3 plus. And this can then be dehydrated to form NO2 plus. From there on, you can continue your reaction. From there on, you have your electrophile. And you also have sulfonation. Look at the bottom reaction. Very important. This is a reversible reaction. So sulfonation, we don't just use it to add the OH group. 
we can use the sulfonate, sulfonate and the sulfonate in order to be able to add the group in different positions and then you remove the sulfonate. Up till now, you only had the diazonium salt where you could do this. This is another reaction. The electrophile is SO3. Now, SO3 is not the strongest of electrophiles. In fact, this reaction normally requires heating and highly concentrated SO3. So fuming SO3, okay, would be H2SO4. Again, it's concentrated. So if, if you're ever using this reaction, stay safe. I know that some of you are thinking about uh, thesis and dissertations right now. In my year, someone did mix H2SO4 and HNO3 for the purposes, okay, and it just spread, spread back to your face. No experiment in the middle was done, but the leader was saying she cried. It had a stay there, but with time it disappeared. So pay attention. These reactions aren't dangerous, but they're not the nicest of reactions. Now you have alkylation and desalination. These two reactions, okay, now mechanisms, I think you know them, but these two reactions seem to be doing pretty much the same thing. You add a carbon chain. But here, they are very different with respect to when you use them, okay? So if you're copying the mechanisms, feel free to do so. Remember, we use the same catalyst as FECN, oh, FECN, FECN, 3 like for propagation and formation. But we are doing the same thing. We are using fluid acid to interact with the protein to produce the electrolyte. So, alkylation is not the most ideal reaction. Alkylation actually activates the So, look at this talk. F1 alkyl group additive is not going to be your major product. Okay, so normally you will end up having over alkylation. On the other hand, acylation is the activity. So normally you add one acyl group and you stop. So this is reason number one. Reason number two is that you end up producing an electrophile, which is a carbocation. So if you have a carbocation like this, well, let's see if I can. Okay. There is no way that it will react. That will change, and you will have a proton shift or a car or a metal shift to form this kind of structure. Okay, same number of carbons, 
So they would shift to it to get that SDR to your prison under the same. These rearrangements are very common. These rearrangements will always happen. And therefore, a calculation is not going to be the most important reaction that you'll ever learn about. I will, send, I will be sending these slides. I mean, these ones I've stolen, but. <laughs> no, but I would advise you guys to send me them because at the end of the day, these slides are for the board. Is there anyone here that was at home for the heart? You're going to the students you are. That was a very special. Should I buy it? Should I not? It's an expensive book. I think you would have say it's even worse than you know. Yes. It's a hard I don't know. This is also a This is also a you are looking at from Kevin Graham. Is it this one? Okay, so there's also this one, which is probably even better than that one, because you can actually go to the chapter that you want, and then you can go to the top, to the top topic that you want. But it has a little bit missing with regards to some pictures. Okay, I've had, I've had it as well. But I'm saying because unless you printed that one, Preferably in color of black and white, please. Now, my color is expensive, but I can't read anything black and white. I need colors in my life. Uh -huh. I, I, it, it. Uh -huh. So, the best way to do that is print the chapters to me, don't we? Okay. Uh, if, for example, we're going to be using chapter 15, 16. Yeah. This is 15. Now, it might be a different version. Eight. Eight is the edition. I'm using the sixth, but I think they're the same. So, treat the graph circulation using other carbocation precursors. Up to now, can you think of it? Oh, I'm serious, you can use it. But first she used it. And I was doing first to her. Then you used it. So I was tempted. So they can use other precursors. Other precursors that you don't need to use right the Now, pay attention. Always make sure that you are producing the carbocation that you want to add on to. Is that you've done elimination reactions? Okay, you've done them in first year. This should be fine because no matter where you eliminate, you're going to have a second carbon line. One carbon number two. Whether you eliminate to the right, or also a terminal, a team, or an internal, a team. You're still going to have the most same in our pocket. I will be carbon number two. The second one is also symmetric. Okay, so here you have to keep it in mind. Make sure that you have no rearrangements and you have the carbocation that you want to use. But acylation is better. So, if I ever give you an assignment, or I ask you a question. And you choose a violation. Well, good luck to you. Now, 
for excitation, you can use the halogen of the chloride sorry, and acetyl hydrides. Instead of the acyl chlorides, recent research, now by recent research, I mean it's three years old. So that's all of everything that we want. But speaking is that of the use of the word being one making this reaction better. And they used to use the iodide. So they had the acyl chloride, they had sodium iodide, and the reaction was much better. Why? Because the carbon iodide one is the weaker one. But the acyl chloride is good enough. Why would you prefer the acyl chloride over the acetyl hydride? Can anyone tell me? If no one volunteers, I will be one people. Yes, that means the acyl chloride is more reactive. Even in the lab, acyl chlorides, they're much more reactive than that, right? Let's look at the table. Acyl chlorides, you never had these reactions. You had hydrides with it. Why? Because the acyl chloride would not survive being transferred into a lab and opened up as units. The anhydrides. Would make you cry. So we're enjoying it. But at least it's there. It's there, right? You can work with it. Okay? So, again, when choosing a reaction, make sure you choose the safest option. Now, this is your mechanism. Please note that the carbon you mine. This here, it only has six electrons. That's why it's so reactive, okay? It wants to get a full of it, so it wants to react. Again, here, it's not attacking directly the halogen, because you have an oxygen, and oxygen is more electronegative. It's the oxygen that will give the energy. Okay, it's the oxygen that will give the elements. Then you will lose the element. But whenever you have, whenever you have a choice of two electronegative atoms interacting in a negative point, go for the most electronegative. And then the rest is, as you know, with other topics. Oh. The lowest acid in this case will then react with your products. So you do need equivalent aromatics. It is not truly removed. Okay? We say it's catalytic because you can reuse it, you can. Try and even remove the process from the reaction, but normally, this is the situation where you add the negative water amounts. I am chloride is cheap. Okay, I am chloride with a much rust, they can create a bit HDL. It's very cheap. Rust, on the other hand, very difficult to find. I remember it took me a week to find a supplier that sold clean pure rust. It was very expensive. Whereas if you just have a piece of steel with an acid for a week, it will rust and it will But then it's not there. So, halo benzenes can make green yards and the reagents. A side benzenes have the carbonyl function in the group, which we will then be analyzing later on in this topic. Okay, 
any questions on what we've done today? This should be the last slide. So, squared. <laughs> 